test, test. Please stand as you're able. The Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the pathways of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk, Through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil, and my cup it runneth over. For surely. Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. For what then shall we say to this, that if God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also give us all things with him? And who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is it to condemn? Is it Christ Jesus? who died and was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, who intercedes for us? And who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, 
nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that we find in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we do rejoice, and we are glad in it. Grace and peace to each of you from God, who is our creator, Jesus the Christ, our redeemer, with the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit. We have come this day to witness to our faith and celebrate the life of Brother Otis Frederick Clopton. We come to this moment recognizing that our God is present even at this time. God always is present with us in life, in death, and in life after death. We are here to witness to the life of a man who lived well, a man who would want to celebrate his life well. And so to this family, we first extend unto you our deepest condolences and prayers and love that during this time, believing that God might enfold you in God's grace. To those who gather here and across the web, we are so thankful that you are here standing with this family. And our prayer is that as we celebrate a life well lived, we might find the blessed assurance that our Jesus is ever present. And in so doing, we might celebrate continually the resurrection of our Lord 
and our brother who now rests with God. The order of service will proceed as it is printed. This time I want to invite Mr. Patrick Anderson Jr. to come and lead us in our hymn of celebration. We're gonna ask everyone, excluding the family, to please stand for our morning hymn, Because He Lives, We Can Face Tomorrow. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he lives, because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know. And life is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. Had greater still the calm assurance this child can face on certain days because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because i know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives and then one day I'll cross the river, I'll fight life's fine, no war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the light of glory and I know he reigns. Everyone sing. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the fear. And life is worth the living just because he lives. You may be seated. Life is worth the living because he lives. Our Old Testament scripture is coming from Psalms 27. Hear the words of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and foes who will stumble and fall. 
Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above my enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desires of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will see goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. The New Testament reading, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle was dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is in heaven. If so be that being clothed, that we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that which we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now, he that have wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also have given unto us the earnestness of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Dr. Muriel, clergy team, Cascade staff, and Cascade family, thank you for always welcoming me home. Otis Frederick Crompton was my friend. We were elected to serve Cascade Board of Trustees in the same class. Otis was instrumental in jumpstarting the five-year capital project process. He was so instrumental that we named the process the Otis process. And for the next five years, we will refer to it as the Otis file or the Otis list. After our three years on the term uh, as Board of Trustees, we began a friendship that lasted until he took his last breath. So I spoke with Otis approximately two days before he transitioned. The last thing he asked me to do was to pray before we said goodbye to each other. Otis specifically asked me to pray for you, Denise. He wanted to make sure that you were going to be okay. He was such at peace at where he was, but he wanted me to make sure that the prayers would continue for you. So I thank you 
And Marion, at this season, for giving me this honor to pray for him at this celebration. Let us pray. Gracious spirit, creator of life, carry of hope, we ask you to make your presence known among us as we celebrate the life of our dear brother, Otis Frederick Clopton. Enable us to be brave in our remembering Otis, honest in our sorrow as we mourn him, and open in love and compassion to each other as we comfort his family. We ask for you to be with this family as they remember with joy the life of a man who, despite battling prostate cancer for over three decades, remained resilient and engaged in life and always loving you, God. We know that he loved you and he put his trust in you. So we ask you to give us just a glimpse, Lord, of the way it would be when love will never be taken away, when life itself will not be diminished, when all that we hold most, most precious to us will live and remain with us forever. During this season, Lord, when his loved ones will express grief, we ask you to help them to focus on what should enable them to keep them going. Remind all of us that time will never, never erase the memories that we have and that we will never be alone because your word teaches us that you are always with us. So, Lord, we give thanks for the time that we had with Otis Frederick Plumpton, both the ups and the downs that this world will give us. But most of all, we are grateful for the love which is stronger than death. We come before you in the name of Jesus lifting up this family who is grieving the loss of their beloved husband, father, brother, grandfather. We ask for your comforting presence to surround them during this time. Your word, Lord. Your word assures us that you are near to the brokenhearted and that you save those who are crushed in spirit. So Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we ask that you will bring comfort and peace to this family. May your presence be a source of solace and strength as they mourn the loss of my beloved friend. Help them to find hope and healing in you, knowing that you are the God of all comfort. Yes, Lord, comfort them. It's in your son Jesus' name we petition. Oh 
said amen. This time we prepare our hearts to hear reflections on the life of our brother Otis. I want to invite all those who are offering reflections to come here to my left to this lectern. Brother Kenneth Payne, Brother Daryl Brightmon, Miss Marion Clopton Dingle, Douglas Griffith, and finally we'll hear from his beloved Denise Brew Clopton. Would you come in that order? Good morning, everyone. Let everyone say, Otis, you are great. I want to thank the family for allowing the 100 to show up and show their love today. Will the members of the 100 Black Men of Atlanta please stand? Thank you so much, brothers. Otis, thank you for being a role model and a sounding board for many. You know, Martin Luther King Jr. once said, the, the ultimate measure of a man it's not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. Thank you, Otis, for standing in times of challenge and controversy, for being a member and a leader of the class of 2018 of the 100 Black Men of Atlanta, the largest class we've ever had. He was a standout. Thank you for making a difference in the lives of so, so many. Thank you for loving your family and helping to build a better America. Thank you for making the membership of the 100 even better. Your leadership, your love of youth, hard work, class, smart, dedication to family, kind heart will always, always be remembered. I can hear Otis now cheering for us right now as he enjoys time with the Lord. I believe he's sending the following message to us through lyrics of one of my favorite songs, which is, I hope you dance. The lyrics are as follows. I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. You get your fill to eat, but always keep that hunger. May you never take one single breath for granted. God forbid love ever leave you empty handed. I hope you still feel small when you stand beside the ocean. Whenever one door closes, I hope one more opens. Promise me that you'll give faith a fighting chance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. I hope you never feel those, fear those mountains in the distance. Never settle for the path of least resistance. Living might mean taking chances, but they're worth taking. Loving might be a mistake, but it's worth making. Don't let some hell-bent heart leave you bitter. When it comes close to selling out, reconsider. Give the heavens above more than just a passing glance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope, I pray, I hope for God that you dance. And finally, I can hear him bestowing upon us 
the following, which is the Irish blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and rain fall soft upon your field. And until we meet again, may God hold you in his palm of his hands. Congratulations, Otis, for making it to God's heavenly presence and encouraging each of us to dance. Thank you. First, giving honor to God, who is the head of my life, to this great pastor, to church and leadership, as well as this family. I will be reading to you the resolution of our dear brother from the United Supreme Council, lustrous Otis F. Clopton, 33rd. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints, Psalms 116 and 15. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's, Romans 14 and 8. In his own way and for his own purpose, God has called home the spirit of our dearly beloved Inspector General to be with him throughout eternity. We pen this resolution in memory of illustrious Otis F. Clopton, 33rd. He will be greatly missed throughout our Masonic world and the United Supreme Council. Whereas our wise Heavenly Father has taken illustrious Otis F. Clopton, 33rd, from our midst, we pray that the days of head would be filled with wonderful memories of him. We are thankful for him and the many contributions he made to the Masonic world. It is our constant prayer that his family and friends continue to rely on God who can and will ease all of their sorrows. There comes a time when we must say goodbye to our dear loved ones. The time has come for us today as everyone it comes. You, take, you took time to do the little things that most people seem to neglect. You never thought of gain or fame and your Masonic family would never forget. Therefore, be it resolved that we share every season with the Clopton family and extend it to them our deepest sympathy. That a copy of this resolution be given to the family with the assurance that answering their concerns will always be our objective. This resolution is written with love, deep sympathy, and tenderness of heart. May God bless and keep his family lifted up in prayer. Prayerfully submitted, March 7, 2024, from the officers and members of the United Supreme Council of the Southern and Western Jurisdiction of the United States of America, Lustus Joseph L. Thomas, 33rd, Most Prussian Sovereign, Grand Commander. My dad loved to tell stories. Maybe that's where I get it from. I'm going to tell you some stories about him and what they meant to me, hoping to do him justice. Today I'm able to say that I enjoy public speaking, but throughout my, ch my childhood it terrified me. I was a child who was painfully shy. Making friends was hard. Raising my hand in class was excruciating. It was hard to make friends. It was hard to talk to people I didn't already know. So to help me out, my parents pushed me into what felt like every opportunity, big and small, that would stretch me in ways I was not interested in being stretched. I resisted every step of the way. My dad in particular saw potential in me that I just didn't. In his eyes, I could do no wrong.
one time when I casually mentioned that my best friend was running for student body president, he insisted that I also run against my best friend. I was horrified. He instantly took on the roles of campaign manager and hype person. We talked strategy and he reminded me not to downplay my qualifications. He told me that it wasn't bragging if it was true. He made me believe that I could do it. Now I didn't win, but when it was all said and done, I realized that I didn't die from embarrassment and that I had grown in, ex in experience and self-respect. He continued to push me, singing in the church choir, soloing, auditioning for the lead role in the school play, performing at p piano recitals, dancing at local stage productions. And with each push, I inched toward becoming a person who was less shy, less paralyzed, and more confident. I wasn't able to see the big picture or his master plan, but those pushes put me on a path of consistent wins that would change my life. I began to push myself, which was his ultimate goal. My dad also pushed himself and others around him. He wanted the best for them. He was always thinking and prided himself on that. Through the many organizations he led and the business he founded, he showed us what was possible even from humble beginnings. For decades, he and his friends raised money, planned food drives, gave out scholarships, tutored students, mentored young people, and the list goes on and on. Through him, I learned that this was the standard. I am the daughter he raised me to be. I'm so thankful to many of you who told me that my father was an ever-present source of strength during particularly tough times, counseling, supporting, listening, visiting, encouraging, inspiring, modeling. Recently, my daughter and I went through lots of photos of dad <clears throat> For a week, I've been staring at one photo in particular, taken on my wedding day. It captures the moment when he and I stood together right before he would lead me down the aisle and give away his only child. I am confident and smiling, filled with anticipation of my life to come. My dad, though, looks pensive. He's there to support me as he always has, beaming with pride, and yet I can also see his pain of giving me away. In the photo, he's not focused on himself, only on my happiness. Dad always put everyone ahead of himself. Lyrics from the Bette Midler song, Wind Beneath My Wings, resonate. It must have been cold there in my shadow to never have sunlight on your face. You are content to let me shine. That's your way. You always walked a step behind. So I was the one with all the glory when you were the one with all the strength. A beautiful face without a name for so long. A beautiful smile to hide the pain. Did you ever know that you're my hero and everything I would like to be? Today I can fly higher than an eagle. For you, Dad, are the wind beneath my wings. Where love is deep, grief is intense. Grieving will be nonlinear and beautiful 
and painful and joyous and heartbreaking and inspiring. And I'm here for it. I'll not hide my emotions, but I will face each one of them proudly, wearing them as proof that I was here and I loved hard. I am the daughter you raised me to be, courageous and bold, even in your grief. Many thanks to those of you here physically and spiritually and online. Your prayers and support mean the world to us. Good morning. I just, first of all, would just like for you to know that it's going to be difficult for me to unpack 77 years that I've known Otis because I'm the baby of five boys, of five boys, and I'm the only one left. Now, but only physically. And before I begin, I would just like to thank personally my brothers and sisters for my thrive. Will you stand, please? Thank you for that family and for your encouragement. Thank you very much. You may be seated. I'm going to read to you uh, four scriptures before I do. I would just like for you to know that Otis was selfless. In 1958, he came from California to Alabama and in a 1954 Mercury. He was white and he drove myself and our mom and our first cousin, who we call our sister Mary, to California. And God was providential. And from that point on, it's history. He made us to be where we are and who we are. And he was selfless in his process of doing it. So truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. John 5, 24. This is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise him up on the last day. John 6, 40. I am the resurrection and the truth and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And this one I love best. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, what? If it was not so, and Jesus don't lie, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if he promised that, then that's what he's gonna do. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive to myself that where I am, there may you may be also. You see, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And I heard a 
pastor say one time, we ain't from around here. We're not. We're just passing through. Our bodies were not designed to last forever. They have a shelf life. If we are to, if we are to be going to inherit the kingdom of God, we have to exchange these perishing bodies for new heavenly ones. So at the last trump, the dead will rise, be caught up in the air, and in a what? Twinkling of an eye, be a change, a change will take place. So let me quickly leave you with this. And the reason why I'm not belaboring it is because it's difficult to unpack 77 years in three minutes. Okay, so I'll leave you with this. I don't know anyone who has died and gone to heaven or hell, for that matter, and came back to let me know who they saw there. However, if you really want to know, if Mary Lou, Junebug, Sally, Mother, Dad, Grammy, or any loved one is in heaven or hell, you need to get there yourself. It will be a beautiful sight to see the bodies of believers of ages that are designed for all of eternity headed to heaven. Can't you just imagine what it's going to look like when you see all the heavenly bodies being changed, okay, and flying through the air? Will you be prepared? Jesus is coming back. And probation is not an option. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, Reverend Dr. Muriel, Pastor Kay, <laughs> Reverend Bush, Reverend Parks, Reverend Jean, uh, Reverend Harvey, many clergy members. Um, to my Cascade family and to all of you, I wanted to stand here, um, so I was sitting over there in that corner, to uh, corporately thank each and every one of you for all your prayers, <coughs> excuse me, your text, and all the wonderful things that you've done um, for me and my family. Um, it hasn't been as difficult as it could have been. And the reason is because of all of you. And for that, I have an appreciative heart. I'm looking at Hattie, <laughs> bigger staff. And um, she's my neighbor. She's also a church member. Hattie has <laughs> said, let me know what you need. I'll bring you some food. Well, as it turned out, yesterday morning, we needed Hattie. I sent Jean over. I was trying to break in my own house. I got locked out, you all. <laughs> and Hattie called the, um, the person that Oh, locksmith, thank you, locksmith. So my point is that whatever was done, whatever was needed, you all were there, and I thank you so very much. <coughs> um, that was not a pleasant moment, but he did come quickly because I was supposed to be going to the first viewing, and I'm thinking, Lord, please don't let me be here till this afternoon because I'm supposed to be over there in the morning, but... We got it done. Thank you, Lord. And I have not locked myself out of the house in 18 years, imagine. So I have to believe there was a reason. Um, I said in my thoughts um, in the letter to heaven uh, what I wanted to say about Otis, because I knew better than trying to be up here trying to say it. I loved him dearly. I admired him greatly. And obviously, I will miss him very much. 
but God knew best. He was most proud of the brothers in the 100 and his class of 2018. And I used to joke with him when they started running for office. Oh, that's so-and-so, he's in my class. I said, oh, does that mean anybody else in the 100 other than your class? <laughs> but he was proud of all of you. <clears throat> and he loved you brothers and sisters in the Masonic order, I guess 60 some years would indicate that. And you all did a wonderful job last night on the Masonic service. And I think Otis would have appreciated and approved. But the thing I want to say today, <coughs> excuse me, that would be most important to Otis. Some of you have said to me that I didn't know he was sick. Um, he wasn't. We saw the program, we went 30 years with him um, having been diagnosed with prostate cancer. He wasn't sick, he was out among all of you um, doing the various things in this program. And it wasn't really, <coughs> excuse me, until the last, till January that he took a turn. But what he would want you all to say, uh, me to say, which is important for him um, to say to you all, is that he took care of his um, body. He went to the doctor when he was supposed to. Um, and he kept check on his PSA, needless to say. And that's what he would want me to say to each one of you, to my sisters who have significant others, brothers, sisters, whatever, and to you brothers. He would want you to get the PSA test, get your blood checked. It takes shorter time to get a blood drawn than me to say, get your blood checked. And he'd also say, get your yearly exam. So he lived 30 years knowing he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Can you imagine what you, he's done and you all can do in 30 years? So if anything that I say today that would be a celebration of his life, memory for him, please, uh, gentlemen, that look like us, because apparently we have some disparity, uh, more prostate cancer in black men. Uh, please make sure you get your PSA test and take care of your bodies, because that's something that he would, he did, and he would want you to do. So blessings to each of you and to everyone here. May God continue to shine his loving mercy and grace upon you. And for those who traveled afar, and I know some of you came from California, but wherever you came from, traveling mercies back home. And I am deeply, deeply grateful for all of you. And my heart is full not just because I'm be by myself for, I haven't been by myself in 30 years, so I'm sure all, some of you who have been in this spot can help me. But I'd ask you to keep me in your prayers, keep me and the family in your prayers. But I am most grateful for all the love and attention and thoughts and prayers and texts and everything that you have done. It has meant the world to me. God bless you. Amen. Friends, one more time, can we give God praise for those reflections of done so beautifully? And I thank you so much. At this time, we want to invite members of the family to meet us here at the Candle of Remembrance that we might light it in honor of our dear brother.
not only did he build his family and his profession, he worked tirelessly here in our church family with our trustees, making sure that the house of God was taken care of. Not only that, he built community with all the brothers whom, whose lives he touched. Old timers used to say it another way. They say, I'm working on a building. It's a sure foundation. And I believe today we're celebrating the life of someone who not just built here on earth, but laid up a foundation in heaven. So I encourage you right now to light this candle in honor of that great mansion as his brother has read. There's many room for all of us lighted in his honor today. God, our strength for today and our bright hope for tomorrow. Thank you, O oh God, for walking with us 
for giving us all that we need to make it on this pilgrim's journey. Our prayer, oh God, is that you would speak comfort to your family, to all the friends who gather in this space, and to those who continue to look to you for the words, for the encouragement and the strength. We pray that you would speak. Have your way in Jesus' name. And the church said amen and amen. To this family, and particularly to my friend and sister Denise, and this is not an easy task for me this day. Otis was a brother. He was an amazing church member. Uh, but Otis was my guy. Otis was a dear friend. Through the years, we had developed a deep and abiding friendship that I just want to reflect on for a few moments. And I really can't stand here without smiling, even though my heart is heavy, because you couldn't be in Otis's presence and not smile. He just had that way of, of being and of having those around him who he loved brought great joy to his life. And so the scripture really has already been read. Uh, we are in sync, my brother. John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. He talks about in my father's house, there are indeed many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And verse 3 is where I want to focus our brief time. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. My friends, today as we gather to honor the life of Brother Otis Frederick Clopton, we are reminded of the incredible journey of a man who lived with purpose, with passion, and with unwavering faith. Otis was more than a mere presence in our lives, but he was a beacon of light, a source of inspiration, and Otis was a pillar of strength. His life was a testament to the power of perseverance and determination. From his humble beginnings in Colony, Alabama. Now, I've heard of a lot of cities in Alabama, especially being from Mississippi. But it sounds like Colony has less than a stoplight. <laughs> Maybe just a couple stop signs. Uh, <laughs> humble beginnings there rising to become a trailblazer in the construction industry, breaking barriers, shadowing, shattering stereotypes along the way, tireless dedication to his craft, and his commitment to excellence propelled Otis to great heights, earning him numerous accolades and recognition throughout his career. But beyond his professional accomplishments, Otis's true legacy lies in the lives he touched and the hearts he uplifted. He was a man of integrity, of kindness, of compassion, always willing to lend a helping hand, always willing to offer words of encouragement to those who needed them. Whether it was mentoring young entrepreneurs or advocating for equality and justice or serving his community with selflessness and grace, Otis's impact will be felt for generations to come. In times of challenge and adversity, Otis turned to his faith for the strength that he needed to make it through. He understood the transient nature of this earthly existence, and he found comfort in a promise of a greater eternal home. Or as the Apostle Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians 5, 1, for we know if this earthly tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven not made with human hands. And Otis's life, my friends, was a testament to this truth. And I'm so glad that he lived each day with the assurance that his ultimate reward awaited him in the arms of our loving God. 
You've heard it said, and it's all throughout uh, his obituary, but Otis was a man who was passionate about construction and building big things. And Otis would appreciate knowing that for all the great things that he built here on earth, something was also greater being constructed for him in eternity. For every life he touched, a brick was being added to the mansion in glory that John tells us about in John chapter 14. And I'm sure that Otis's bright mansion above is expansive and because of the exponential reach that he had throughout the earth. You don't have to go too far to know that Otis touched so many of us. His wife, Denise, is a testament to that. And Denise, let me just say to you how remarkable of a woman you are, how you cared for him, how you loved him, and how it is that throughout your relationship, you encourage so many of us who have the privilege of getting to know you. I so enjoy the days where I would sit with you all uh, in your home and just having our times of fellowship. And most of the time, when we ended our time together at the house, we would always take a group picture. Uh, and this is when mom was he still here. And how it is that he cared for her really spoke to the man uh, that Otis, Otis truly is. And that's a reflection of you. That's a reflection of a man who was loved well so that he could love well. Amen, somebody. To his daughter, may you continue to hold your father with you every day. Uh, being a girl dad, I know how that can be. Uh, you, 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 you never lose that connection with dad. And, and, and girls are just interesting. I, I say this almost every time we have a funeral for a girl dad. I, I say this, girls don't play fair. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't matter how how long you've had the relate it does not matter girls don't play fair you always find that way to go beyond that that hard external structure that we try to put up so that you don't always get your way and then we just feel that God calls us to give you everything you want y'all pray for me i'm still going going through that right now but as you was talking about your father you encouraged me you encourage so many of us to know that your father truly believed in you. And the many times that we spoke, he was truly proud of you. So hold that near to your heart in the days to come. To his relationship with his family, thank you all so much for sharing him with us. And to his Cascade family. Y'all, we will always remember Otis. Serving as a trustee, participating in marriage ministry, Believer Sunday School, who's here with us in worship. Veterans Ministry. Really, anything you ask Otis to do in the church, Otis would look at you, he would smile, and he would say, okay. That's just the servant's heart Otis had. Otis was not the type of person you would have to pump and prime and pry to get something done. No, Otis always understood the assignment. He always knew why he was created, always looking for a reason to serve. And might I pause parenthetically right here to say we can learn something from that, that there, we don't have to look too far for reasons to serve, for the need to be met. All we need to do is open our eyes, look around us. There's always something to be done. But are you willing to use your life to do it? Otis was always willing to use his life to make something happen. And in 2018, we shared another celebration together, becoming brothers, being initiated into the same class, 2018, 100 Black Men of Atlanta. I remember when we were being initiated and we stepped to the side and I think Sid, we were at uh, your Bentley dealership for our uh, induction. And while we were there, Otis and I were sharing an exchange and he said something to me that I've always held to heart. He said it means something to experience this with my pastor. And so it wasn't just becoming a church member, but now we were brothers in a different way. And I truly appreciated that. 
Otis was very active in the 100, as Brother Ken said, always trying to serve, and brothers always looking to Otis for that good sage wisdom that truly comes from living through some things. And Otis also had a way of unselfishly giving opportunities to make people's gifts known. I want to reflect on a very unique time that Otis invited me to do something. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. When Otis was the national president of the United Supreme Council, he invited me to preach many years back for a service that they were having. And it was my first time preaching to a Masonic group. And I guess I didn't get the memo for just how big of a deal Otis was. Normally when I saw Otis at church, he would be adorned in his suit and tie, dressed very well. But when I walked into the event that day and saw Otis in his official regalia and how these brothers referred to him as the most puissant sovereign grand commander, I remember leaning over to Otis and saying to him, Otis, you didn't tell me you were the man. <laughs> Brothers, thank y'all for allowing me to share that moment. <laughs> and what a time we had that day. But friends, I tell you now, our dear brother is resting in the arms of another sovereign grand commander. He's now resting in the arms of the one who hung the stars in the sky, the one who separated night from day, the one who defied nature by walking on the water and calming the sea. He's now in the arms of the one that promised that if he went to prepare a place for us, that he would return and receive us unto himself. And my friends, God kept his promise. And on March the 7th, God kept his promise to Brother Otis. His illness may have returned, but so did God. And on that day, God handed Otis his building permit, showed him the plans to his mansion, gave him the sovereign schematics to his eternal home, and said, Otis, now it's time to move in. But this time, Otis, you won't need to engineer this building. You won't need to serve as its contractor because the place that you're going has been made by God, God's self. The place that you're going has been constructed by Jesus. And friends, it is a place. It is a place that is glorious, and it is a place that brings us to the heart of God. And so, my friends, and to this family, as we bid farewell to our brother, let us hold fast to the hope of our own reunion. Let us hold fast to the hope of that eternal house where pain and sorrow shall be no more. My brother, rest well from your labors. Your deeds will follow you. Thank you for teaching us. And brother, we love you. And we will see you on the other side.
behalf of the family, they would like to take a moment to thank each of you who sent a card, a text, called or did some other act of kindness at this difficult time. We were blessed to have Otis in our lives and we are blessed to have you, family and friends, too, who cared enough to take the time to provide comfort, care, love, and prayers. Thank you to the healthcare professionals who made this journey easier. And thank you to our Cascades United Methodist Church family for all your help, your care, and participation. We are grateful to you all and have, our, and have most appreciative hearts. This is again from the family. Friends, we also, and we will make sure the family receives these resolutions. We have one from the companion of the Royal House, the affiliated Supreme Grand Chapter of the Order of the Eastern Star, and a proclamation in loving member, memory of Brother Otis from the 100 Black Men of Atlanta Incorporated. My friends, at this time, I invite everyone to stand excluding the family. And I want to encourage us that in the days to come, to keep this family in your thoughts and in your prayers as we wrap our arms around them in the days that are before them. I'm gonna invite our funeral directors to come and receive this benediction. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our God lift up the glory of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may you live for God, love God and follow God. And in all things, may we continue to stay the course. In Jesus' name, and the church said, amen.